uh, past president of our club and uh, very active in, uh, in East Coast wood turning as well back in Pennsylvania. So, uh, and known him for, he's become a great friend, but uh, he taught this class at, for uh, the Howe class, the first one in November, and we all made cowboy hats. And so I think, uh, I think he knows how to do this. And <laughs> so without further ado, Mr. Sonny, Ed Sonny Jones. Can you hear me now? Cool. Um, as Don said, we did a how class, the first one. I taught how to do the, taught, I led the group on how to do the cowboy hat. We had six people in there with myself, and I am happy to say all six people successfully turned a small cowboy hat. Um, when I first started turning, uh, my brother, I have th two, three brothers and and all four of us turn and uh, one of my brothers and I joined clubs and Darryl? I'm sorry Darryl? yeah my other brother Daryl he um, we all joined a club and uh, I got to tell you if you're not a member of a club join one if you know anybody that wants to turn tell them to join a club you don't have to make every mistake you can learn from the mistakes that everybody else made going along the way but wood turning is a lot of fun and um, when I first started, I, um, I wanted to turn a bowl. Man, that's all I wanted to do. I turned a bowl. When I turned a bowl, I thought, oh, my God, I've made it. Then I saw somebody turn a live edge bowl, and I said, boy, if I could do that, I'm good. And then I saw somebody do a segmented bowl, and I said, oh, shit, i got to do that. So, and then I was done. I'm new. I never have, I'm good. And then I saw one of those dizzy bowls, and I said, oh, oh man, if only. And so then... And I was at a demonstration, a symposium, and Johan Mickelson made a cowboy hat. And I thought, oh, there it is. I got, got to learn. Got to do it. And uh, my brother and I were both at the show. We bombarded him with questions before the demo, during the demo, after the demo. So annoying, but he was so gracious, and he answered every question. And so I'm just going to tell you, if you have any questions tonight? His number is five seven four six three. No, he's a great guy. Great guy, really. Um, yeah. Anyway, we're going to turn a, We're going to try to turn a small cowboy hat. I want to apologize to Johan Mickelson. There's an article here in American Wood Turner. I brought this just so you can see that I truly am a ham and egger because I am not going to turn anything as nice as he does. All right. Um, I had brought some up here that I have turned in the past, and uh, I've probably at this point turned maybe 50 hats. And um, so just to make sure I was in the time element, I turned a couple yesterday. And uh, first one took me an hour and five minutes. Second one took me 42. But we're going to talk a little bit, so it's going to take me longer. But I'm going to have you out of here early. And uh, who signed up for the cleanup? Boy, are you so, you're going to be sorry. Robin, come here, will you? Yeah, it's going to be rough. Pick this up. Yeah, all right, now. Now, pick up. I'm going to tell you, about 99.9% .9 of this is going to be on the floor. My, uh, my brother Tom made this for me. It's a silly piece of plexiglass, and if you look, it's got a hole in the center, and it's got rings, and the idea is that you can put this on a piece of wood, and you can put this in the middle of it, and then you can take a Sharpie, and you could kind of just draw, you know, and you can make anything the size of these rings. If you don't have one of these, uh, my brother's number is, no. <laughs> I, I take advantage of him. He came to my house one time and opened segmented bowls. He built a form, a little jig to make open segmented bowls, and he brought it to my house to show it to me. And then when he left, he couldn't find it. So, what the, so I can make open segmented bowls now, too, because uh, I stole his jig. And, 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 and that's what we do. We steal from each other. In my professional life, I was a chef, and I stole all kinds of recipes. Trust me. Um, but this thing is really helpful. 
And uh, so what we can do is we can put this on the bow blank and we can find the center. And then you can do this uh, between centers. You can do this with a worm screw. You can do it with a faceplate. Uh, I have a little faceplate that I like. And uh, this is going to get turned away eventually. It doesn't matter. So I'm going to mount this. And I could have done this before because you really didn't need to see this. That's uh, magic. And uh, these screws are a little old. Uh, you might, but this is this is very green. In fact, I, I really thought about not using this and taking a piece out of the raffle just to show you that, you know, green is great, let me tell you. Uh, in fact, you probably won't be able to do a hat unless the wood is green. That said, I sent out a notice for uh, the club if anybody had any aspen. I wanted some aspen. When I moved to Denver, I found that people here don't really like aspen that much. And uh, they make great cowboy hats. This, uh, this is an aspen hat. This one's an aspen hat. Uh, I think that's cottonwood, maple, maple, maple. Uh, anyhow, but thank you, Steve Claycomb. Uh, I don't know. We talked about Dave Hawley, and he's a great resource. He got us all that wood from Shaq. Let's have a hand for Steve Claycomb, who brings wood all the time. If you saw that spalted maple back there, that was Steve again. And uh, thank you, Steve. Steve gave me three pieces: um, one here, one here. And uh, the other piece, and he had them already split for me. They're half logs. Thank you, Steve. Um, the other one was long enough. I got these two hats out of it. And uh, the thing I, these are not sanded. These, uh, these two hats are just rough turned. And uh, we can start one that way and one this way. And if you look, uh, they're a little rough. And you might like the look of the rough. I mean, it looks like an old cowboy hat that's been sitting out in the sun. Um, but you can sand them. I'm not going to sand tonight. Uh, what I'll tell you this is I turn these hats, and then the next day when they're dry, I will remove the rubber bands, and then I will sand, sand them. So uh, anyway, this one is so green, and it's starting to crack check already, so we're going to have to turn some of that away. But basically what we're going to do is turn a bowl, because all this is, I'm sorry, all this is is a bowl with a large rim. All it is. Nothing magic about it. So we're going to take this off. I'm going to figure out how to do it. There's got to be a way to hold that in. This lever. Oh, fancy. Oh, it won't turn unless I, okay. Always, story of my life, a woman showing me up. I do, I really do, it's fine. When I was a kid, my dad had a lathe. We, we lived on a farm, and my dad had a lathe, and uh, he only used it to turn tool handles. But uh, then we found out you could do other stuff. Is there, is there a live center? Is it in there? I'm going to want that. Yeah, I could do that. I've got um, – yeah, give it to me. I, um, Marty reminded me I had some pictures I was going to show. These are from my – from Instagram. I don't know where you want this.
It's not for some. But it has to look nice from that angle. Like, there's just on my phone, there's uh, like 20 or 30 hats there on display. I was doing a show and I had a whole bunch of them. That's good. And then, uh, and there's a, there's an Aspen hat that's big enough to put on your head. And then there's one more I want to show you. This one piece of wood from New Jersey, piece of black cherry that, um, and if you look, we'll get it. There you go. I, and I apologize for the glare. But if you look, the band around the hat is dark uh, because I was able to burnish that. That wood got a little dry on me as I was turning it. And uh, because the wood became a little drier, I was able to take a piece of uh, Paduke or Purple Heart or Red Heart and you rub it against, as it's spinning, you hold it against the hat band and it will burnish, and you can color that. I know Don made one. They used, I think, a Sharpie or something. And a torch. He torched his. Um, if you look, these I put the bands in, but you won't see them uh, colored because this wood is so green, I couldn't get it to, to burnish. But anyway. Um, oh, yeah, this is what I'm looking for. Thank you, Larry. I do want to explain one thing, though. If you look, I've already got a tenon on here, and that's a, a big tenon. That tenon is bigger because uh, when I rough it, I use a bigger chuck. Uh, I'm going to use a smaller chuck today because I want, to, I want the smaller chuck to fit inside here when I'm done so I can reverse the hat right on the chuck. So I will not be using the big one, but this is something you might be interested in. This is a very expensive piece of uh, Luan, and uh, I have three chucks that I use mostly, uh, actually four. Um, so my large chuck, this is the dimension of the tenon. So I can put this on here and size up what size tenon I need for my larger chuck. The one I'm using tonight is my medium one, and I will turn a tenon on here this big, and uh, and then I have a gold thing from P PSI, and that's the size. And then for my rose engine, I have a little tiny chuck, and you can see that's how I mark the size of my tenon. Now this is kind of like minimum. minimum for yeah, for grip. right. Band. Yeah, I wanna I wanna make my tenon maybe. Uh, an eighth of an inch bigger than this. So, and it's it just hangs in my shop, and then whatever chuck I'm using, I can figure out what size, and uh, and, I'll, and I'll show you how that works. So for the medium one, let's see if we can make this go round. Bear with me. Okay, we're gonna make this, we're gonna make it right, but for this tenon. Now, yeah, I'll get there. Um, so what I want to do is just kind of mark that. There's my protection. I feel protected. This lathe is so much nicer than mine. I have to fight with mine like every day, like really fight with it. And maybe if I had uh, the bed as clean as this one, it would work better. But I'm not scheduled for a shop tour, so I don't have to, <laughs> I don't have to clean anything. So 
So anyhow, you can see how I did that. I, I figured out what size tenon I want. Who's on cleanup duty? Me. Change that. I'll be packing up. Eye protection. Bill Grumbine was a pretty good turner from the East Coast. I don't know if anybody ever saw any of his videos. Bill Grumbine was a big, big man. And he used to tell everybody, he was very proud of his turning muscle. Because he would tuck that in there and he'd, oh, my God. But he told me on the first demo I ever saw him do, he said, uh, if you're not going to wear a face shield, the first thing you should turn is a long white cane. This lathe is too good. Well, we're going to turn something. We'll get there. All right. Always turn your piece around to make sure that it's not going to hit your tool rest. Don Prorak told us that this will cut. If it, you show up and miss it, it'll, it'll work. Take some of the wobble out of it, and then I'm going to turn it around. Because really what we're doing is turning the bottom of a bowl. The tail stock side is the top of the hat, and right now I'm just getting it round. No, but it's something to think about. Now we've all done that. We've all turned a bow, and so that's where we go. I'm gonna true up that tenon, and then we'll get started. Yes? No, um, the next turning challenge will be a cowboy hat. And you can do it. I remember in the Olympics, Okay, I think I broke this. 
Okay, I was loosening it. I remember during the Olympics, there was a little girl who had a broken leg. And her coach was from Europe or something. And he, he was going, you can do it. You can do it. And she had to do the vault and flip in the air and land on a broken leg. And he kept going, you can do it. And I kept saying, I was kind of like, why don't you do it? You're kind of big and strong. Why don't you do it? Anyhow, I used a, a little spindle gouge just to tighten up or clean up my my um, tenon. You want to make sure that this is flat because once we turn this around and put it in the chuck, it's got to be right. Anyhow, so now what I'm going to do is just kind of finish the bottom of my bowl. And we're taking some of that rough off. Who's going to clean up? And what I want to do basically at this point is start. And you may notice what time it was when we started. What was it? Right about seven. This is a timed event. I don't like the look of that. So let's get rid of that. Okay. I'm sorry? Uh, I think I did one in like 20 minutes. I practiced this because um, I was looking for some aspen because aspen is really easy. Um, and Steve came up with, uh, Steve said, oh, you're looking for aspen. I said, yeah. He said, I got maple. I said, <laughs> I said, same thing. It'll work. It'll be fine. But I wanted to make sure it'll work. So I went in the shop and I turned these two out of the same wood that I'm turning now. Uh, oh, they're the ones going around. Okay. The one I did in an hour and five minutes, and the other one I did in 42. They're green. Steve, when did you cut this? No, not this. This is like a week ago, right? And if you look, I'm making the hat. And I'm trying to decide how big I want the hat to be. And it's entirely up to me. And I can come back. And you always want to turn the lathe off, you know, before you move the tool rest. And you want to check and make sure you're not hitting. I just didn't do that then, but I usually do. No, I always do. The reason I want to do this I want to do this rather quickly because it's going to take some time to clean up. So at this point I'm thinking, all right, I'll come down here. And if I like the size of this, but I don't think I do. I think I want this to be a little smaller because I want to have some some wings that can come up. So I'm going to go a little smaller. Don't make me regret this. I like that.
Now, the other thing you have to remember is where your pith is. And this was cracking, so I'm going to take maybe a half an inch off of the bottom of this, and I want to leave a good half an inch. So I'm close, because I'm about an inch in whatever. So I want to think about doing the inside of the hat, the rim. Now, this cut, you really want to be clean. Because, well, you saw the one going around. You could sand this after, because this one didn't bend a lot. But you're going to have a heck of a time sanding this after you're finished with a lot of bend. So you want to make this cut as clean as possible. So you want to make this cut, the inside of this, as clean as possible. This side here, it doesn't matter. You could easily sand this, you know, because it's, nothing's in your way. And I'll show you how to do that. But, uh, so the idea is the wings of the hat, the rim of the hat is going to come up like this. So I'm going to cheat. And when I turn the inside of this, I'm going to turn it like in a concave. I'm going to make sure I've got a little bit of start already. So when I come back to the lathe and start addressing this, I'm not going to go straight in. I'm going to kind of, kind of sweep it in. Make sure it doesn't. Yeah, OK. Now, I want to leave a hat band, but it doesn't have to be that thick. The neat thing about turning a cowboy hat is if you turn a regular bowl, right? Let's say we're going to make a regular bowl out of this piece. Sit. You would turn away all this. That's the pretty wood, you know? When you make a regular bowl, a traditional bowl, you turn away the heartwood and you leave a lot of the sap. With the cowboy hat, we're going to turn away a lot of sap and keep the heartwood, which, I don't know, I think it looks cool. You know, when you can get that kind of heartwood in there, it's, it's just, I don't know, I think it, it's better. Come on. I had a little bit of a crack here anyhow, so I want to get down in there, take some of that away. And I, I will switch to my smaller, uh, I think this is a 3 8 I don't know, uh, bowl gouge. Jessica was telling me ahead of time that it's all about tool control, and I agree with her. And it's kind of like you don't need to be a big, strong girl, you know, big guy. You can, uh, you can let the tool do the work and let the tool get in there. Yeah, that's, that's good. Um, I like to keep the tail, re uh, the tool rest up as long as possible. Um, my movie career isn't over yet, so I'm trying to protect this. And so I'm going to put a hot band in here. And that's what you're going for. Nice. 
curl. And I might even make that a little smaller. Now, if I don't get a lot of bend, I could sand this. I could always sand this again. This here, I can't. Oh, it's going to be very difficult. Robin said she finished her hat, took it home, and had her husband sand it. And it took him three weeks. Uh, it took him a while. But I've asked my wife to come in the shop and sand for me, and she does not. She doesn't understand why I go in the shop. Okay. There it is. Done. No. No, not yet. Um, but if you look, you'll see I've got a little bit of a concave started already. Now, can you see that or not? Okay. All right. Now. This is where it gets fun. She's going to have to show me again. All right. Got it. Look at that. You didn't have to tell me three times. So you can see, are we okay or no? Okay. You can see we've got pretty much um, the shape of a hat already, right? You could, you could, except that if you sand this, you're going to dry that wood out. She wanted to know if I could sand this right now. There have been times when I have, but I did a pretty nice job. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> good for me. Uh, yeah, so we're going to remove the, the uh, faceplate. Now, like I said, you could do this between center. You could do it with a worm screw. I like the face plate, but it really depends. If I've got a really bad piece of wood and it's good, yeah, then I'll do uh, between centers. But this had a, but this green wood, just from today, I, I got this ready today, and just from today, you can see it's already starting to crack. I don't know if you can see that, but you can see it's cracking. So I had I would have turned that away anyway, but I think there's enough heartwood there that's going to look all right. Yeah, yeah, that would that would help. Yeah, and again, you do you. Uh, I've discovered that a good clean cut, you don't have to sand much. Now, the bottom, if you look at the bowls that I, or the hats I turned around, sent around, the bottoms are a little rough, and you'll see why in a minute. Because you can't get one continuous sweep. We're going to cut a little bit away, and we're going to cut a little bit more, then we're gonna, and we're going to keep, we're going to go a little at a time. And that's the secret. You got to go just a little at a time. And uh, once you decide that you're thick or you're thin enough, you're thin enough. You can't go back. You get one shot at this or two shots. Actually, I got a piece of maple that was spalled pretty good in the raffle. And I thought about not taking it up to the car. I thought about leaving it here and making a hat out of it just to show you that you don't have to start with a round blank. You want to get in there tight, tighten up your uh, your chuck. I could have made that tendon a little smaller, but it'll work. It'll work if this spins true. Let's see how that's going to look. Oh. True enough. I'm okay with that. And if you look, you can see it's got a little already started, a little bit. You can decide how much of that start you want to have. Um, you can go nuts. I have done them where they're completely flat, just to see. I think when Johan Mickelson does his, his are flat. 
But I don't know. He's got a way to, he's got a, a really good form that he puts the hat in that bends it and makes it oval. And uh, you'll see I'm lazy. I don't have it that good. I'm going to show you three ways to bend the hat. Um, you know, I have, uh, like I said, I have three brothers. Uh, one of them, oh, what a turner. I hope he comes out here because he specializes in miniature. And him and Bear would have a good time talking because he does. He sends me pictures of his miniatures, and they're sitting like on a thumbtack, you know, like one of those tacks you push in with the red, whatever it is, and uh, push, push tack, push pin. So he'll send me something he turned. It's sitting on that push pin. Or he'll send me a something that he turned, and it's sitting on a dime. And he'll say, well, this is just so you can see the perspective. And then I'll turn like a 17-inch bowl. <laughs> and I'll tell him it's sitting on a dime. <laughs> you get an idea. <laughs> and and he's, he's a brilliant turner. I keep trying to get him to come out here and, and do a demo for us because, I mean, he's, he does. He sells a lot of dollhouse furniture. And... Uh, and he uses a lathe as big as this, and he makes his own tools, and he's really good at it. And then I have another brother who, and I was just telling, uh, I was just telling Marty today, if man made it, he can fix it. He is just incredible. He'll come to your house. Anything broken? Yeah, all right, he'll fix it. He went to TV repair school. Didn't help him. What happens today? You just throw the TV out and get another one. Yeah. So he's got a lot of time on his hands. Nah, he can fix anything. He's he's pretty he's pretty cool. I want to get this a little. Again, I'm going to leave the tool rest up until we start hollowing the bowl. You didn't forget that, right? We're gonna. This is a bowl. We're gonna hollow out the bowl. Okay. Just checking. See it? Yep. Good. I can go back to my bigger gouge. Oh, and I, I should have told you this. You want these to be sharp. It's the ABC. Always be cutting. Now, always be in control. Always be careful. Uh, watch what you're doing. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of some of this. I wish Stuart Batty was here tonight because I'd do a lot of push cut. And by the way, Stuart Batty is the demo next month and you all want to be here. I took his class. Yeah, he's, he's got it. He's very good. Now, when you get to the end of the tool rest, stop. Don't ask me how I know. Always try to let it off when you move the tool rest. Okay, I got a good half inch there. I'm cool. At this point, I'm going to go to the smaller tool. Like Jessica said, you don't have to use all strength. You can do this with a nice cut. And are you showing from the top down pretty much? Cool. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a little bit, and then I'm going to cut a little bit, and then, but I'm going to do this in stages. And that's when I'm going to decide if I'm thin enough. And I am probably less than an eighth of an inch, which is not thin enough. 
I want to go a little bit thinner. Now, this is important because once I make this decision, I can't go back. Once I'm there, I'm there. So I'm going to be very careful. Give myself a little room here. But you don't want to turn away too much of this because this is what's keeping all this where it is. Thin enough, and now I can go a little at a time. And what I want to do is just match that cut. And that's why if you looked at those pieces I sent around, they were a little jagged on the bottom, because I'm not going to be able to do this in one sweep. Now the other thing, I will tell you something my stepfather told me, devil hates a coward. So you want to, you want to do this, and I don't know if it's going to show up here. Oh baby, duh. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, Daddy like. Hey, uh, did somebody in the front row want to come? Mickey, come up here and look. I don't know if they can see this on the camera. Oh, if I put the light on the other side, you guys are not too demanding. But, Mick, look. Just come over here and look at that. See it? Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, it's not a donut. I mean, it goes right through. All right, so I turned it thin. Okay, now, um, that helps. And in my shop, I like to turn the lights off when I do this. Um, <laughs> it, 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 kind, it kind of does. The other thing, the other thing is, you know, if you want, you can buy these. And what you want to do is make sure that this when you put this together and it touches there, you want to make sure it touches there. Because this is worthless if this is touching and there's a half an inch here. Just doesn't work. But I can do this and I can see that I am, the technical term for this is damn thin. <laughs> and what I'd like to do is continue that and we'll see if we can. There's no guarantee but we're going to try. So I'm going to come back out here, pick up that cut. Now I have, there have been many times that I've made that last cut. And we all know about that last cut. Where you say, oh no. And what you're looking for is these really thin hairs, those little tiny, tiny, tiny ribbons that we're getting off, and we can check ourselves. It helps if the tool rests out, it doesn't get in your way. Now, I'm thick there. I'm a good quarter of an inch. So I want to take them out. Now, as we get closer to the hat itself, that doesn't matter as much, but it's still like to be thin. So I'm going to come out here and pick up that cut. But you can see where I said I can't come back out here now. There's no way I'm coming out here to cut because that will just shatter. Ask me how I know.
I was not successful with the first hat that I turned, which is why I called uh, Johan many times. And the what? I saw Johan Mickelson do it. And I said, holy God, that's incredible. And, uh, and it, it really was, and I enjoyed seeing him do it. Um, I want to see with the light, how am I doing? No, this is kind of cool. You can see that I'm thin, but then when I get down toward here, you can see that goes away. The other thing I want to tell you is on this rim, the side grain will show the light better than the end grain. Or the, you know, but when we get inside, the end grain will show up like crazy because we're looking through the pores this way. And do not be fooled by that because you'll think, oh, I'm still, I'm still really thin, and then you'll, then you'll go through. I'm going to try and take one little more pass here, and I know I shouldn't. Oh yeah, I'm happy with that. Now, I don't know what I was doing at my shop when I turned that, uh, those two samples that I sent around, because the bottom of that is all rough as hell, but this, I'm telling you, I got it. This is smooth. Yeah, and maybe it's because the tool's sharp. I don't know. But if you, if you want to see, you don't bend this part. That's the, uh, that's the, you know, where it's run through. But if you try, you can see that I can turn this a little. I can bend it little bit. Now, could I be thinner? Yeah, I could be thinner. But this is a demo. <laughs> and the worst thing that happens during a demo is when you go through and you bust it. So we're going to be happy with this, and we're going to say, hey, he did a hell of a job. So now I'm going to get rid of some of this wood. And to do that, I really should move my tool rest. Where does stop? Okay. Again, I'm leaving this up as long as possible. And I'm kind of just going to... Okay, now, we're going to see where we're at. You can see it's already got a little bend in it. Yeah, it's thick right there. Yeah. What do you think, one last cut? I mean, I'm not, coming, I'm not coming out here. I should be all right. Get it going. Yeah, I don't dare do any more than that. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to still use this. I'm not done with it. You guys know about Turner's elbow, right? Didn't mean to do that. I'm sorry? No, I just want to get that out of the way and I won't need that now I will later but right now I'm good so now pretty piece of wood thank you Steve I told Steve I'm going to turn this hat I'm going to turn that hat and the two I already turned, I'm going to finish them, and then Steve can have whichever one he wants. He gets first dibs, and I'll donate the other one or two to the uh, auction at the holiday show. One year I turned a, a hat, put it in the auction, and 
I think Don bought it for like three bucks or something. So. Five. Five? You've overpaid. All right, now here's the thing. It's a bowl. We're going to hollow a bowl. That's simple. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here, make sure it doesn't hit. I'm going to come in. I'm going to lower this slightly. See, my tool rest is different. You heard that excuse, right? Okay, I've used that one up. All right, so now... It's really just a matter of hollowing out a bowl. And I think you've all done that. Now, I don't know how wide this bowl wants to be. I know it wants to be wider than this but not out here somewhere because I'm not making a funnel hat. All right. So I can kind of look at this. And one thing you can kind of do is you can kind of say, all right, that's how wide that is right now on the outside at that rim. And then you can come over here and look and see, oh, I've got a good inch. All right. So there's no reason to get nervous yet. The other thing you can do is you can stand here and look down. Oh, okay, I see where that's at. And if you wanted to, you could take that Sharpie and you could kind of mark where you think it is. That's not what I do. What I do is, and this is the other thing you got to remember is, this tool will go wherever you point it, where you tell it to go. So if I tell this tool, if I hold it like this, it's going to, if I hold it like this, it's going to go here. But if I get this point in the straight direction, the tool will go there. So I kind of use it. And you know what they say, you put this up against your body and you use your body? No, I'm using my hands. But I'm telling the tool where to go. And I'm strong enough to push the tool where I want it. I'm not out there yet. But the worst thing would be to go through the thing now. But I'll show you a trick. So I told you we'd bring this back into use. You can take this and kind of go in here and if you look at that i don't know if you see it on the on the thing there i've got a good three quarters of an inch i don't want three quarters of an inch i want this not this not where the rim is i don't want that as thin but where the hat is i want that hat as thin as this which means if i've got a sixteenth of an inch here on the on the on this what do we call this rim a uh, brim Hat band. If we've got a sixteenth of an inch of a hat band, that could be sixteenth of an inch thicker than when I get in there. But I know I've got a good, what did I say, half inch. So let's take a little bit more. And I'll tell you, you will turn your hat. You'll turn your lathe on and off a lot doing this part because you want to stop and check every so often, like every half hour, so. no, every couple of minutes. Did I tell you my stepfather said the devil hates a coward? Yeah, he meant it. I think he was saying I was the devil. All right, I'm, I'm not there yet. Well, my brothers have turned hats, too. And we're from New Jersey. 
Not a lot of calls for cowboy hats in New Jersey. There is a rodeo. There is a rodeo in New Jersey. Uh, it's on the circuit. It's an actual rodeo. No, it's actually in Salem County, and it's a town called Cowtown. And they have uh, a actual rodeo. And I have buddies from high school who were rodeo riders. And a friend of mine who was a, a doctor, he became the doctor for the rodeo. His father was, and he became the doctor for the rodeo. And he volunteers every Saturday night when there's a rodeo, and he goes in case somebody gets hurt. So I went to my 50th high school reunion. That's right, I'm 42. Graduated when I was 12. I went to my high school reunion, and one of the guys in my class who became a rodeo rider is named Jimmy Lee Walker. Now, that's a name for a rodeo rider, right? Jimmy Lee. And uh, I turned him a hat, and the guy, Dr. Ostrom, who became the uh, doctor at the, at the, he's in my class too, so I gave him a hat. I thought, who deserves a hat more than these two guys? Then I move out here, and I find out another kid from my high school, his name is Abe Morris, who lives here in Denver, was on the professional rodeo circuit. So I got to meet him and give him a hat. He has a book out now called My Cowboy Hat Still Fits, which I thought was clever. And I'm going to take a couple more cuts. Now, I will caution you, as Don did when he did his demo, if you think you want to take a quarter of an inch off, don't take a quarter of an inch. Take an eighth, because you're taking from both sides. I still don't think I'm there yet, but I told you I'd shut it off and turn it a couple times. I'm measuring the thickness of the hat band. And I want to make sure that the hat band is less than that half inch that I've still got. And we're not in any hurry, because I think I'm doing pretty good on time. The other thing I'm doing as I'm turning in is I'm not going straight in. I'm kind of going this way because the hat kind of goes this way. So I'm following the thickness of the hat. <laughs> okay. I don't know how you're going to get to see that. Maybe if I do it this way. You see, you can see that right through that. That's, that's thin enough. Okay, so now, <laughs> one more cut. Now, now, what you want to do, and, and don't ask me how I know this, you don't want to go too deep. No, no, no. So what you want to do is kind of decide, so that would be too deep. So you want to come and kind of set this. It's like Ron Popeil set it and forget it. And that's how deep I want to be. So you can see I got a good inch to go in. All right. I have done this. Now, Mickelson has a light that when he turns this around, he can put the light through his headstock and the light bulb spins around and he can see the light shining through the hat. I uh, spared no expense. I didn't make one. I wouldn't know how to make one. My brother Ron could make one. Because he could, yeah, and then I could steal it from him. You know what he did? He made a jig. He makes uh, yarn balls, and he made a jig that goes on the side of the bowl, and his router just goes and follows inside this jig and cuts the J in all of his yarn bowls. And uh, I told him I want one. So I'm waiting for that. Oh wait, Jessica told me to be easy.
That's not a good thing to do. And I am getting wet, by the way. And if you look at the glass, the glass is getting wet. So whoever's on cleanup, you want to make sure you get that. All right, I'm going to I'm gonna cut a little bit more. I don't know. I like it. I do. I kind of like this. I'm a little thick. A little thick. And if you don't get thin here, guess what? This will crack tomorrow morning. So you want to make sure you want to make sure you get thin. So I can come in here. And I can make that cut. And remember, whatever I take off, I'm taking off both sides at the same time. And uh, again, I brought this thing. And you can see where you're at. See it? And you can see how thick you are where you're at. There's a good three quarters of an inch here that's not thin enough. So the light does help you. The other thing you can do is make sure that you're not too thin. Say, I got a good quarter of an inch. And again, that's up to me. I don't have to have this hat as tall as it is. I can cut some of this off the top. Just don't cut too much off the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in here And clean that up. Now, I don't know if you use carbide tools. I bought these. I had a, I had a little brother. His name was Mark. I was a volunteer with Big Brothers Big Sisters. And I got this little, this little red-headed kid. He's little, I had my own Opie. Cutest kid you ever saw. He was 11. And when they matched us up, they interviewed me. And they said, what do you do? And I said, well, I'm a chef, and I like to do woodworking. They interviewed him, and he said, I like to make things, I like to cook things, and I like to eat things. So they put us together. And I tried to get him to use this, and he wouldn't. But he liked this. And so I bought a set for him. But I will tell you, uh, this will clean up the bottom of that bowl pretty nicely. And I remember... I remember Jimmy Clues saying that the bow didn't care what tool you used. So I just showed you that. Now, normally I wouldn't do that, but I just showed you that on that. You could use a uh, negative red scraper. It's entirely up to you. I still left a little there. I'm going to take one more cut. I like it. Okay. I could tell you that it's done, but you guys are pretty smart, and you'd realize it wasn't. There's no fool in you. So we're going to take it off. Oh, the light. I can do anything you want there, guy. And you can see I've got a good half inch there. Okay. Now, it's a little.
All right, Paul, you want to come up here and... and, and Marty, come here and do it. You know, you're drawing the ball out. I'm just... No, we're good. He's got it. He's 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 thrilled. Oh, okay. We'll try it. Sure. Let's. Good enough. Okay. So you. Sorry about that. So now, you could. You could. Uh, all right. You could turn. You could do a jam chuck. Jam chuck would work nice. I discovered a long time ago, you just got to remember which way you turn this. Because once you expand it and you go to take this off, you don't want to expand it more. <laughs> Ask me how I know. Oh, and if anybody wants to, if, if anybody who couldn't come to the how class and you really would like to turn a hat, you know, I could, I'd, I'd be willing to help you. You know, I'm in that mentoring thing. And so if you really wanted me to come to your house, or if you wanted to come to my shop, we could turn a hat together. I'd, I'd be willing to help. It's, it's, as you can see, it's a, a lot of fun. All right, now I've turned that a lot, but it's not gonna, not gonna break, I hope. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of this. And I'm going to, uh, I'm going to turn this away. Now, as you can see, I've got a lot of effort into this already. And this hat will sell at a craft show for like 40 bucks. Um, so I don't want to lose this. Because I need the 40 bucks. Um, I thought they'd sell really well here in Colorado. They do, but not like I thought they would. Thought about that. I really did. And turn like 80 of them or something like that. They'd sell there, I'm sure. Um, anyway, All right, that's good. I don't need this right now. Maybe. But uh, why, take, why take that chance? Uh, and all I'm going to do right now is take this tenon off and make a little design in the top of the hat. If you, if you looked at some of these, cowboy hats are not typically flat at the top, so they, they usually have a little bit of a, a ripple or something in them. I've never owned a cowboy hat. I don't really know. Oh, and you notice I checked to make sure it didn't hit the tour. Okay. And now, really light cuts. Really sharp tool, really light cuts. And you got to get rid of that divot from the tool rest of it. Anyhow. So what I'm doing is I'm just putting a little bit of a, I rounded that over and put a little bit of a groove, and now I'm going to round this off. And I'm going to get rid of the rest of this tenon. And then I'm going to turn the, turn the lathe off, move the tool rest, and just get rid of this nubby. Now tomorrow, I could put this back on the lathe, and I could sand this. I can also very gently turn it around and put this inside here, maybe put a little paper towel around it to protect it, and sand the inside. If I remember correctly, and I won't, I don't want to turn, I don't want to expand this anymore. I want to loosen it. 
that I do. How about that? Hey. Okay. And uh, oh wait, we're not done. We're not done. We're not done. We're not done. Whoa. No. Easy. 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 We're not done. Because that looks like crap. Here's the thing. I'm going to show you three ways you can bend this hat. One, you can get a pail. These things sell for like 40 bucks. And if you get a pail, you could actually put this hat in there and then put a weight on it, and that'll bend it down. This is still a little green. I just turned this one yesterday or Saturday. And you could put a weight on here. Or you can use your expansion clamp, and you can make that go down the way you want. What? Oh, sure. Uh, yeah, not, not going to do that. Um, you do that. All right. The other thing that I found is uh, I was making cutting boards, so I cut a bunch of these on a 45, and then I found that if you clamp these to your work table, you can actually put this in here and put a weight on it, and then that would hold too. And the next day, you come back. Or the tried and true... You get these very expensive rubber bands. They cost, I don't know, Office Max, you get a box of them for like a buck. Now, the question is, how many rubber bands do you put? <laughs> if you put a lot of rubber bands, you might get this if you're thin. I'm, I'm not crazy about it. That one hasn't sold for a reason. Uh, if you don't put a lot of rubber bands, you get something like this, and you'll notice that hasn't sold either. What I've found is three, like that in the middle, and then I'll generally take one and go on the angle, like that. And then I'll go the other way on the angle. And... Uh, and it doesn't look like much right now, but tomorrow morning that son of a gun will bend up. No. So once that once that dry, that will overnight, that will bend up. And I'll probably get this look. Which is what I like. So, oh yeah, 24 hours. And then tomorrow, tomorrow, after it's dried for 24 or the next day or the next day or whatever you can wait a, a, a you can wait a month it doesn't matter what i'll do is i'll mount this back on here so i'll mount this back oh, the other way oh my god i told you i knew i knew i knew the other way yeah this is the left-handed chuck which works fine my brother's left-handed And that'll stay on there, you know. But you don't want to spin it. I can take a, a sander on a on a hook and loop, and I can sand this as much as I want. I can get in here and sand this part. I can sand this part. Or I could even... I could even reverse it, put it in there, and I can sand inside here. I can sand all this. And it's amazing how tough this is. Brad, you'll tell me right. It's pretty tough. You can take a... A hook and loop on a drill, and you can stand here and sand this, and it's not going to break. It'll it'll sand pretty nicely. When I'm making them, as it's spinning around, I should have mentioned that. Take a dry piece of uh, purple heart, red heart, paduke, something of color, and you can hold it as this is spinning around. Well, this is a bad example, but as this is spinning around. You can hold a piece of wood here on the band, and you can color it. You can burnish it. Uh, if that doesn't work, you could always take one of those Tombow pens, or you can take a Sharpie if you want. Uh, you could take a piece of cloth, you know, with a feather or something. You could you could embellish it any way you want. If the wood is really green, like the one that's going around right now, you're not going to embellish. You're not going to burnish that rim, and the wood's too wet. 
But the next day, I could put this on the lathe now and take a piece of wood, and if I can get in there, I could burnish it. So I'd have to cut the piece of wood on an angle, and then I could probably get in there and burnish this now because it's dry. But not, not when it's green. Although, Johan Mickelson, he can. Yeah, he's, um, we're not worthy. He's, he's that good. Question in the back. I have done that. I have done that. Uh, she, she asked, can you soak the wood? I did, um, uh, and again, uh, an example of somebody being really cool. Uh, I watched Trent Bosch, and he did a bowl inside the bowl. And so I had to make the bowl inside the bowl. And when I did it, I couldn't get the bowl to go in. And I called him, and I said, Trent, uh, you don't know me, but uh, I saw you demo this. And uh, actually, I, and then I saw him demo it again. I took my bowl inside a bowl to show it to him, and he looked at it and said, it's too thick, too thick. I said, I was going to say something nice about you. Uh, but I asked a question. I said, how can I get this wood that's already turned? And he said, put it in a pot of water and boil it until it sinks. And then you could bend it. So I have had hats like this that didn't bend enough. I could put this in a pot of boiling water, boil it, get it to bend, and then I could, I could shape it. I didn't because I wanted to show you what a failure this can be. I did that on purpose. I failed on purpose. Uh, yeah, that's uh, and that's that's basically it. You want green wood? That one took me uh, an hour and seventeen, with me talking to you. So it's it's a fun project. I have uh, I've done this. I have taken. Well, these all have uh, walnut oil or walrus oil. I bought some walrus oil. It's really good stuff. Uh, which is canoba and mineral oil and beeswax together, or coconut oil, coconut oil. No walrus in that, no. Um, but anyhow, so I called Trent Bosch. He told me how to fix the problem. Again, very nice man. Uh, and then one time, David Ellsworth came to our club. Everybody's heard of David Ellsworth. He came to our club. He's from, Qua he was from Quakertown, and my, our club was in Allentown. He came on the night that it was show and tell, and I brought one of my first cowboy hats, and it was probably as nice as this one, and I put it on the show and tell, did not know he was going to be there, and he looked at it and did the critique, and he picked it up, and he said, who turned this? And it had a sour look on his face, and I, and I did, and he said, it's pretty cool. He said... <laughs> This is really neat. I've never done one. He said, I've seen people do it. He said, I've never done one. He think it's really neat. And so I got a picture, which I shared with Pat one time. I have a picture of David Ellsworth and I, and he's holding my cowboy hat. And that's, that's pretty cool. I'm going to come to the symposium this year. I really am. Uh, if somebody wants to give me a ride. No, I'm only kidding. But I'm going to go. Any other questions? Who's on cleanup? <laughs> oh, th this is what I wanted to do. Um, the hat that's going around, the hat that's going around, how much does that weigh, sir? Give me a 12 ounces, 13, tomorrow it'll be six and a half. It will, it'll lose as, it'll lose more weight. This one hasn't even been sanded yet and it's as light as a feather. And we started with, Robin, we started with a piece of wood that weighed a good 20 pounds. Yeah, I did. Yeah, but we didn't have this much light. Yeah. yeah. Well, and again, when I'm in my shop, I will turn the lights off and look at the light shining through. I will tell you this. When you're on the outside doing this rim part, the light will shine easier through the, through the side grain. But when you get to this end grain, the light will not go through as much. So make sure when you test it with a light, you're looking at this. When you go inside the hat, the light will shine through the end grain a lot easier than it does the side grain. Because this is, as you know, trees are just a bunch of straws that run up and down. And when you're shining the light through one of the open straws, the light shines really, really good. All right, the challenge the next month. Any other questions? 
I wouldn't have tried pine, although I have made them with beetle kill. I have done beetle kill. I have not tried cedar. I will tell you this, apple wants to crack. Apple will crack pretty easily. Uh, I've gotten away with it, but you got to be thin. I've done walnut. I've done black walnut. Black walnuts are good because black hats, the, you know, the bad guy. Holly, Holly, my brother in New Jersey used to get me big chunks of, he's the guy with the miniatures. He, he can make a lot of miniatures out of a big piece of holly. But he would give me big chunks of holly, and I'd turn cowboy hats out of holly, pure white, let them, don't put any finish on them, sand them, let them sit, and in a couple of days, they look like an old suede hat. And they're really cool, really cool. I wish I could get some more uh, holly. Not out here, no, no holly. Told David Ellsworth I was moving to Denver, and he said, why? And I said, well, my daughter, and he said, okay. He said, but he said, I will warn you, here in Pennsylvania, we have 600 species of wood. In Denver, they have six, and five of them are aspen. <laughs> the other one's cottonwood, yeah. And that's, that's, <laughs> anyway, yeah, David Ellsworth. Uh, anyway, any other questions?